How's it going, Blazers? This is David Blade Banter, working to bring you specifications you can relate to so you can have an educated decision on your purchases. This is going to be a new knife that I'm going to be checking out. Uh, I've had it for a little bit already, so I've been having some time with it, uh, even sharpened it up. So this is one that I did purchase, so it's not provided by the brand, but I will be talking about the brand later. And to cover what's with all the blue tape, I covered up the information, so it would give you some information um, on the knife before you make any judgments on it or which one it might be. Uh, so that's why I'm covering it up. Uh, so uh, I've already let the brand know as far as my opinion on how much tape I used. Uh, but uh, that is going to be one thing here. So that's going to be how it sits in the pocket uh, for this knife. Uh, and then uh, we'll go over at later on in the video what brand, what's it called, and all those things. Uh, but this one is going to be how it sits in pocket for you. It is a deep carry pocket clip, standard stainless steel. Uh, that's going to be what it looks like there. Uh, so that's going to be what it is out of the pocket. I did actually change out the pocket, I mean the thumb stud for it. So it is a threaded uh, thumb stud, uh, but I found that it got it a little bit in the way uh, when I was sharpening it with a uh, work sharp. Right, so I did try it on a work sharp sharpener. And then, uh, so I did put in uh, the ones off of the Solaris. Uh, so these are threaded as well. So there's a little bit less profile to it, so that has changed out. So that is not the factory one. Uh, these are the factory ones that come with the knife. So getting that out of the way for that. Uh, so this one is going to be a different locking mechanism. So if you can already see here, there's another lock that is similar to this um, that came out uh, probably two years ago at this point. They really um, they they released the information on, on like the ant lock from Steel Wheel uh, quite a while ago and then it was like a few years before they actually brought it out and then it, um, it seems like it's kind of a dying thing because they don't have it on any new models right now uh, but this is going to be the actuation so instead of pulling back like an axis lock or a bar lock this one pulls up to actually release uh, so that's going to be when you open it up and then you can actually lift up on it here and then drop it down so it does have a little bit of a detent on the bottom side so similar to like a Hogue knife uh, where they have that final detent at the end. Uh, this one has kind of the same thing. Uh, if you give a little bit of a push or a flip down, you can overcome that and do it in one motion, but it is something that is available for that. So this one is going to be both thumb stud as well as the flipper tab uh, release. Uh, so this is going to be ambidextrous, so this is on both sides. Uh, so it's kind of a, just an interesting one. I saw this over at SHOT Show, talked with the folks there, and they're pretty excited about where they're going as far as the brand goes, and I think they, they should have a little bit more um, a little bit more behind it. Uh, we don't really see it a lot. I did a search on this one and I don't think I really saw anything out there for the knife. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of looking at it to see where it is and uh, barely how it does. Uh, so this one, it came with a little bit, actually forgot to do it. So I'm going to check out it for now uh, how this does for the flipper tab. Uh, so normally I do the test on it. I did before, but I failed to write it down. So I'm going to be checking this out right now. So this is going to be how I check on uh, basically the detent pressure or the amount of force needed to actually flip the knife. Pull this down. So two pounds, 9.6 ounces. So as you see there, my preferences are this is going to be a thumb stud only knife. It's going to be about two, um, uh, two pounds uh, for detent. And then uh, basically with the flipper tab is about three pounds. So it's 2.9 ish. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, for both actuations uh, for this knife and then I was actually able to do a middle finger flick on it as well so the detent on it was a little bit higher when I first got it so that is something that uh, did uh, get a little bit better um, as I was using it lubricated it I did take it apart uh, so I'll probably throw in a picture of what it looks like on the inside as well uh, so kind of running through what that looks like as well for that so this one is called the DLM lock the dynamic locking mechanism. So from the inside, it's similar to kind of a take on a back lock as far as the best I can explain it. Uh, so uh, it actually has kind of within this area, it actually connects over to this back spacer. This is actually a carriage unit that actually moves up and down. Uh, so it actually ties into the uh, back spacer here and it does rotate up and down. The spring is on one of the sides. And so there's actually, uh, so instead of it being a regular um, regular back lock. I mean, it's a through construction, so you don't see any type of springs or anything here. So one of the sides, one of the liners is actually the spring and kind of the stop for the, um, the DLM lock. So that's something when you push it up, it does have a specific stop to it. And even when you actually have it lifted all the way up, uh, this is where the detent hits. So I'm, I'm fully 
um, disengaging the lock and so it's not going to be like an access lock where you can flip it open and closed uh, so that it actually it does have that detent so it hits the top of this lock and it has a little bit more where it flexes that bar a little bit uh, to get that detent so uh, so on that side it's not going to be one that you can actuate the lock and flip it open and close like a lot of people do with a bench made knife it is going to be either actuation with the uh, flipper tab or the thumb stud uh, for it so that's going to be how you're going to be opening it up uh, for this knife here uh, so this has a, you know, still quite a bit of ways to get it open uh, so again the the detent did go down a little bit once I lubricated it took it apart uh, but it was very hard to do a middle finger flick uh, before but now fully functional works really well for it here uh, this one comes in about 4.9 ounces so yes that's a little bit high for most knives uh, but so that's going to be as far as weight wise that's going to be 24 quarters and a penny so if you have that laying around, you can kind of get that in hand to see what that feels like. If you're rocking a new iPhone 13, that weighs 6.14 ounces. So if you're saying that's way too heavy for a knife, your phone weighs more than that. Uh, so uh, that's going to be how that looks. So you can take this information and then actually even add quarters to a current knife. It's like a bug out weighs 1.9 ounces. So this is basically 0.2 ounces. This is 0.1 ounces. So do the math, add it to it. Just put it right on the scale. You can feel how this would be in your hand to get that understanding as far as what that weight is. Because a lot of times numbers are hard to kind of put together as far as, well, what does that feel like? Now you can know what it feels like with those that information there. So current price on this, uh, retail price to consumers are going to be about $35.99, so very inexpensive for this knife. Uh, MSRP is about $57.95 uh, for it. So all those things included, it's pretty good. I mean, it's going to be, uh, for steel-wise, it's going to be a D2 blade steel. So that's going to be about 4.5 out of 10 for uh, uh, corrosion resistance, and then going to be about a 5 out of 10 for edge retention, and that's according to Knife Steel Nerds. So that's where I get that information from for it. Uh, so this one also is going to be pretty good overall. I mean, this is going to be one that has a blade length uh, for this knife. And yes, I will take off this blue tape at some point uh, during the video. But this is going to be a blade length. It's going to be 3.25. A cutting is actually 3.3. So with this upswept, it actually has a little bit more cutting length uh, than the actual blade length itself. So interesting thing for that. Uh, primary grind is about 8 degrees, so this basically this uh, full angle that goes all the way up from the sharpened edge all the way up to um, the spine of the knife. So that's going to be about 8 degrees, so not the thinnest knife, so it's going to be a pretty good worker for that. Uh, going to be pretty good stability as far as that edge goes. But one thing I did find, uh, the actual uh, sharpened edge, so that secondary bevel that actually creates the sharp edge that you cut with, uh, was 17 degrees on one side and 26 degrees on the other side so it still was sharp still cut but it was not uh, basically a uniform grind for it so since i did uh, sharpen it i put uh, basically 20 degrees per side on it uh, for the knife and then i use this little gauge here to measure that so it has a little laser goes in there and then once you actually put the blade in there this isn't going to look right once you put the blade in there then it gives you it's hard to see it's hard for me to tell where it's looking at no that's a hollow so that's a well that's a hollow grind so those don't work very well flat grinds work much better so let's get a flat grind here there we go so flat grind you're gonna see here that's where you're gonna have basically both of those angles primary and secondary angle for that knife. And that's how I measure that. Uh, so I have this little tool here, that's what I do, and that's how I get those measurements for you. Now uh, before I used to do a kind of mathematical equation for it, and now I just use that. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, so that's what it is now. So it was gonna be that 70 degrees, 26 degrees, now it's 20 degrees per side. Uh, so behind the edge thickness before I did the sharpening uh, was about seven sheets of paper. So yes, that's not gonna be super slicey, it's 29 thousandths. Uh, but it still does the job, still cuts. Uh, so some of the knives that are, I think there's a little bit, a lot of emphasis on uh, behind edge thickness, but uh, over time when you use it, it's going to get thicker. It's going to be something that um, you're going to have. And really, I think the, um, the actual um, eight degree primary, that's going to be something that will affect that a little bit more, um, especially as you go. 
Uh, so really kitchen knife is probably like three degrees or less. Uh, this is gonna be an eight degree angle. So pretty good worker overall uh, for this knife. So uh, carry side, uh, this is gonna be left and right hand carry. So that's gonna be here. So you're gonna have this little plate here. So, sorry, I do have some things on there, but uh, so this is gonna be the left hand carry, right hand carry. And let's actually just reveal this already. Uh, so what I was talking about uh, for Basically, the, all the tape will take off. So I, I covered it up just so you wouldn't know uh, who it was from. Give it a kind of a fair shake uh, for what it was. And then we'll take this off on both sides. There you go. So, as you see here, this is an Elite Tactical. Uh, so it took me a while to remember that name, but Elite Tactical. I think they should drop Tactical. Um, I think that's some of the knives out there um, make a good tactical knife. Elite Tactical. I mean, Elite probably works a little bit better, but and that's what their name is. So it is uh, a registered trademark. So they probably won't change that. They might change the amount of billboarding and the size. And this is called the Chaser. So this is in D2 blade steel. So that's a good setup for it. Uh, it's really, I mean, the steel is still, a lot of people are detuned out as far as steel goes, but it still does fairly well. And I'll show you kind of across as far as what this looks like uh, for the knife. And one thing that I found out really good when I disassembled this, basically this is going to be T6, is T8 here, but the T6s and T8s are very deep, uh, so they actually do sit very well. Uh, so I, I'm less concerned about having this have any type of stripping or anything else for the hardware uh, that's actually a really good thing uh, for uh, any type of hardware because a lot of times people like the t8s all the way across my own knife has a t8 all the way across but this is t6 sunk in really well the t8 sunk in really well uh, it is more looks like a more of a stamped out uh, pivot so it doesn't look milled to me uh, so that might cut down on some of the assembly cost but uh, elite tactical is made by uh, a company uh, that is uh, Master Cutlery. So Master Cutlery, if you go to their website, there are a lot, a lot of brands under Master Cutlery. So they probably produce by far the most knives out of probably the majority of imports. Because uh, they have anything from sadly the gas station type of knife. Uh, have uh, Nick Shabazz's knife in there as far as the uh, was that the the zombie hunter Z hunter uh, knife they produce that or used to produce that uh, They also produce all the way up to this one. They have some of their other brands They just went to Dick's Sporting Goods with one of the other uh, Outdoor brands, so there's a lot under that umbrella uh, for this knife. Uh, so again This is one to be the, the locks that they have. Uh, this is a DLM lock. It is patent pending uh, So it does have that lift up and it is very, very, like, it doesn't have a lot of resistance in the middle. It's very free dropping, very fun in that sense. Uh, but you can actually actuate it on both sides. So the thumb side, even do it with the pointer. So this is where it is very ambidextrous. It does take a little bit to get used to, but it's kind of like, don't really think about it. And you'll be able to get that lock mechanism uh, down pretty well uh, for the knife. Handle side is going to be about four. 0.45 inches so if you're still here for that then congratulations give a thumbs up and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel but these are some of the things that I offer for this channel with some of the specifications and everything that is available so hopefully you guys like it hopefully it's something that uh, you enjoy uh, but that is about all I have to say about that one except I forgot to give you the size comparison so let's do that real quick uh, so we're going to do that so this is going to be the Elite Tactical Chaser. And then we're going to throw in basically the bug out, see where that sits. So very much different for that lock. So this one goes up, this one goes back for re releasing it. You're going to have pair of two, or pair of three, sorry. You're going to have rat two. And you're going to have, of course, the Ryan Solar is still available, that's at the blackout, and also the uh, one that is stone washed. So those are available, and also we do have this carry case pouch. It has the 
uh, you see the cloth in there and everything. This is on sale for $15, normally $20, so it's on the website for orionknives.com, so check that out if you're interested. Check that out if you like the Orion Solaris as well. So thank you for that, getting very close to the Scorpio. So the more I sell this, the more I sell that, the faster you can get the Scorpio if you really want it. But now that is about all I have to say about that one today.